Welcome back to another episode of High Impact Garage as we take this motor behind me apart. watching a while you also remember back at the beginning of the SR620 project we tried to get the motor in that 83720 that was wrecked running. You also are aware that it did not run. Uh, it actually locked up on itself literally seconds after it fired. We didn't even get that on camera and that really kind of sucks but nonetheless we are here today. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a forensic teardown on this engine. We're going to go ahead and take it completely apart, or at least down to where we know what's up with it. It happens to be that this engine would make a really awesome core for an engine that's coming in for another vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and disassemble this and see if there's anything in this we want to keep. If there is, then we've got a plan for a core, but if not, then we'll ship this out as a core. But we really want to know what happened inside the engine. So the candidate today is a 1983 Nissan Z24 engine. And this is a, an engine that powered most of your Nissan pickups from 1983 on to 1989. And it displaces 2.4 liters. It's not it, the, the, the size of the engine is within the name, unlike Toyota, where they don't follow that nomenclature. But as you, as you can see, this engine is filthy. And uh, it's probably got all of 300,000 miles on it. You know, you can tell that the EGR was, well, I mean, that wasn't even a very proper block off. Um, <laughs> it hardly ran when it did run. And we have now an understanding of why it ended up being a dead truck. But let's get this apart and let's see what brought this to its demise. So Darren, what do you think killed this engine? What do you think killed the engine? Uh, we'll go with rod knock. Well, with a connecting rod failure. Connecting rod failure. That's kind of what I'm thinking, but... It could be any number of things. It could be a lot of things, you know. Shattered piston. Uh, broken camshaft. I mean, it was cranking, and then it ran and then stopped cranking. Like, it's locked solid. So, something got jammed up. Yeah. But it was having a hard time cranking. So, those are our clues to go on. I, I think it's bearing failure, like you. Yeah. Uh, connecting rod bearing, probably. Don't know. We'll find it out. makes sense. I mean, if... <clears throat> For as long as the vehicle's been parked, if they had rod knock, it makes sense why it was parked. Wonder if we're gonna find any sawdust in the engine. Ooh, sawdust. See. cover now to a point where we got all the bolts out of it, got the accessories off. I'm going to take this valve cover off and we're going to take a look at what's going on inside. And just as expected, it's really, really dirty in here. The dust just came from me dipping it over, but this is really sludgy in here. And right out of the gate, I can tell you some, the one thing that's wrong, um, and that's this timing chain. Let's check a look at it. All right, so here's the timing chain. And if you look, 
This chain has a ton of slack in it, and the guide is gone on the slack on the tension side or on the slack side. And it looks like we might be all the way out on this side too. Let's get that off and take a look and see what's going on. First, let's get the oil drained out of it. I pulled the dipstick tube and I noticed that we still had oil in it when we pulled it. We didn't drain it. So we need to drain the oil out. Once that's out, then we'll go ahead and flip it over, pull the pan off, pull the timing cover off, and we'll get a better look at that chain. So, so anyway, um, here we are. Here's some bits and pieces that are in the bottom. Uh, there's actually very little in the pan. This piece right here, and there's really not much else. I'm like looking for, oh, there it is. There's the connecting rod that's the problem. You can notice how it's discolored from the rest. This guy right here, number three. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I would say you were right. I have all work. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna go ahead and take the bottom, or take the oil pump off, and then flip this over, and then we'll pull the timing cover, look at the chain. We'll come back to that bearing and show you what that looks like in a second. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get this timing cover off. And uh, right out of the gate, there's a couple of pieces that of the timing chain guide that are just kind of smattered down. These these pieces um, they've been rubbing for a while, so it like probably fell down and broke off. And so there you go. And. There is the tensioner shoe. That guy is falling out. Let's move the camera around. So here with the camera around like here, you can see that this guide that would have been right here, um, yeah, with that thing gone, obviously, you know, this chain would have been flapping around. And this chain is definitely toast. But here's the other thing that's kind of important to note. So this is how this normally, I mean the chain is so wore out. I mean it ate through, this guide is ate up really bad too. And this tensioner shoe would have been quite a ways out I think in order to maintain tension. So over time even these double row timing chains take quite a beating as you can see with this stuff here. This engine had 300,000 on it. It's possible this is the original chain. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and say let's take this chain off. I'll show you how that's done. And then we'll pull the head off. We'll take a look and see what if it's an OE head gasket, see if see what the cylinders look like and see what kind of ridge they have at the top. See if the cylinder heads worth saving and then we'll roll it over and take a look at that rod bearing and look at that carnage. Alright, so we got the head off and if we pull this gasket off I'm going to tell you right now, that is a Felpro. So this thing has been replaced at some point in its past. You can tell by the blue stripe that's still visible. 
So there's a Felpro head gasket. And usually we like, and this is a good thing because we take a look at the Felpro right in here. You can see where the firing ring gets really necked way down. That's a common failure point on these. But the nice thing about this is it was fully sealed, especially in all the spots that are commonly a problem. Like this spot right over in here is a very common point of failure. So that's good. If we look in the cylinders, there is a little bit of ridge wear. Uh, I would need an oversize that was going to get bored out. Yeah, it's definitely going to need an oversize. But it's got 300,000 miles on it. So it looks like it was an oil issue that took it out at the bottom end. Let's go to look at the head. All right, well, over here looking at the cylinder head, you can look at the valves. The exhaust valves are all pretty much an even color except for this one. But if you look at it, the spark plug is recessed too. Um, and it looks like that spark plug may not have been threaded all the way in. So this is, that might not have had optimal combustion because the plugs weren't set right. Um, but other than that, um, one of the points of failure we look for is a crack in the center of the, in between the valves. And you can't really tell. Can't really tell, but this head looks like it's fairly good. So the next step on our disassembly here is to take the engine block, roll it over, and then we're going to pull that rod cap off, and I'll show you what that rod cap looks like when it is locked up. I've actually not had a Z24 locked like that, but, you know, I think it would have actually thrown that rod if we had gotten any RPMs to it, so I'm actually kind of glad that it didn't, but let's take a look. All right, let's go ahead and take this rod cap off, and let's get this one off. Okay, and this rod bolt spins good, so that's that's a good sign, actually. So we got our rod bolts off, and use every mechanic's friend, a little hammer, and just knock it side to side, and we got it to crack loose. Got it cracked loose. Oh, wrong side. We'll go in here and get that apart. It looks like I'm having just a little bit of a time getting that apart. So I'm going to use a hammer again. Oh. Nope, got it. Okay. So, let me wipe this out. Darren's been nice enough to be using brake cleaner, so this is nice. It's going to clean this off real good. And you can see right there, oh, you can see right there the damage to the rod. So this rod end would be unusable in its current condition so it means it have to be um, honed out but this rod could probably be repaired it's just a matter of whether you would want to um, being that it could have had stress but I think this one would be salvageable the bearing however is definitely not salvageable and I just let's pop that down that way I push the rod through and as you expected, well, of course the rod bearings have, are were just banged around. There's one of the bearings. You can see that that's all that's left of that. And then it looks like, oh, the other piece went down in the bearing. Yeah, let's try and get that out. Use this tool. We'll go down in there. Oh. There you go. Look at that. And there's still yet another piece in there that was in there. 
Now, since we've got this piston, let's push it all the way out. Push the piston all the way through. Okay, and there's the other piece of bearing. And the other thing that's up, oh, the oil rings are not stuck. But yeah, it doesn't have a tremendous amount of heat damage. It could be saved. if we really wanted to. But the crank is definitely hosed. It would need to be turned down. Uh, this is something we'd probably turn down quite a bit. All right, so we decided not only to take this one apart, but the one next to it apart. So we'll flip this this way. And uh, this is the bearing we found. And if you look at it, there's just a ton of trash in that. So we went ahead we went ahead and we checked these pistons out and uh, we pulled them out of the engine and we actually are pretty glad we did because we discovered that uh, one of them is broken but number one is also not the same as the other three. So at some point somebody changed piston one and of course it's also tight on the head. It doesn't move nice and free like the rest of them. So yeah, um, there you have it. There is the carnage. So we have the number three rod was toast because the bearing spun and then we trashed all of the rod bearings. And so there you have it. That's actually what really you know took it out was the rod bearing spun. There was contamination in the oil, probably other things from like the metal fragments of the chain guide. So all of this ripped through, grenaded this engine. It's one of those things where you could have potentially saved the engine if you'd stop, fix the timing chain. Um, we don't know. It's tough to say that. But the reality is these engines do last quite a long time. It's just a matter of how you take care of them. And unfortunately, in this particular case, 300,000 miles of heavy abuse was just too much. So we hope you enjoyed our little teardown here. Hope it was kind of funny, and maybe, maybe you guys figured it out before we did. Anyway, we're grateful for uh, all of our watchers, and a uh, special shout-out to everyone who is watching, who knows us personally. And uh, we'll catch you all on the flip side.